Welcome to the memorial service of Kayla Bourne. This is uh, March 10th, 2019. Kayla Marie Bourne, 63, was called to her heavenly home on March 1st, 2019. She was a baptized believer in Christ Jesus. Her devotion to her family and firm belief in the triune God supported her in her peaceful journey home. Kayla was born to the late James and Barbara Burnett on February 7th. 1956. Kayla was blessed with a large and loving family. She married her husband Richard Bourne on July 16, 2007 in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Kayla is survived by her three children, her sons Jason and Daryl Petty, her daughter Tiffany Epstein, Epstein, thank you, her grandchildren Joshua, Hannah, Sarah, Lee, Leah, Caitlin, Lillian, Gabriella, Gabriel, and Madison. Her brother, Jim Burnett. Her sisters, Karen Stanton and Sherry Finney. Kayla is dearly missed by her loved ones who celebrate the fact that she is in heaven. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We have come together to seek God's comfort in our sorrow and to rejoice in the promise of the resurrection. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who said, Come to me all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you wept at the grave of your friend Lazarus, and you consoled Mary and Martha in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Kayla and dry the tears of all who weep. Calm our troubled hearts, dispel our doubts and fears, and lead us to praise you for having brought him to faith, her to faith. Excuse me. In your rising from the dead, you conquered death and opened the gates to eternal life. Strengthen us with your word and lead us through this earthly life until at last we are united with you and all the saints in glory everlasting. Hear the words from Psalm 23. This will serve as the basis of our message this afternoon. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. The Apostle Paul writes to the Romans, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus gives us this comfort. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Say this response with me, please. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then we also will appear with Him in glory. We will be before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. Never again will we hunger. Never again will we thirst. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be our shepherd. He will lead us to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from our eye. Let us pray. God of all grace, you sent your Son, Jesus, to destroy the power of death and to open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we too shall live. Comfort us with your promise that neither death nor life, neither things present nor things to come, shall be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. 
I have two lessons for you. Our first is from 1 Corinthians 15. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. Thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hear these words of comfort from Jesus our Savior in the Gospel of John, chapter 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in Me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the place to where I am going. This is the word of our Lord. Our first song is Amazing Grace. I invite you to sing it with me. You, of course, don't have to. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. The Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope, secure. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. message that I want to share with you this afternoon is taken from Psalm 23. You've already heard it read once in our service, so I will just jump into it. I want to go under the theme, uh, Jesus is Kayla's good shepherd. He's yours too. Um, Let me just take you to verse 1. The Lord's my shepherd, I shall not be in want. I don't think that you see a whole lot of shepherds around the hills of Winston-Salem, or probably Tucson. Is that a big shepherding area? Probably not so much. It's desert, right? Yeah, but like, is there ranch land with shepherds, sheep and stuff? Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, you do own sheep? Oh, nice. Well, that's good. Well, then this, this is apropos, yeah. That's very good. Yeah. Well, um... The, the concept of being a shepherd, I think, is lost, I think. But we don't, the animal husbandry side of farming um, is very vivid, and it made it really easy to understand. And yet, it's beautiful, and even though none of us are shepherds, well, we've got one shepherd here, brother. 
But you're, you're my first. That's awesome, Jason. <laughs> so, but uh, the concept is still, you're looking after an animal. And so we, the picture of us being God's sheep is a familiar one in Scripture. It's everywhere. And how he leads us and he feeds us. And so I want to kind of go forward under that theme. And I know that God provided for Kayla, more or less. I mean, 2019, times are still relatively hard when I talk to people. There's still people who try to find work and can't. Um, and that can be really difficult. And yet I know that God provided for Kayla, not because I know anything about her life, because I don't, but God promised that he would. And he must have, as you sit before me. And she had a home, she had shelter, she was taken care of. And God will provide for you as well. Uh, there, and sometimes I think we get our priorities a little confused. I don't think Kayla did, though, from what I've heard of you and what you've said. She always kept her Savior in the forefront, and that was the highest priority in her life. The question is asked in Scripture, what good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world and yet forfeit his soul? And that's another rhetorical question where it doesn't do you any good if you gain the whole world and you forfeit your soul. If Jesus could have avoided all the hardship and pain and suffering, if he just would have bowed down to the devil. Well, it's true, but he would have said that we would all have been lost. He never took his eyes off the prize. And I don't want to say that about Kayla necessarily. I don't think that she was perfect. She is a saint, meaning she is saved by God and she's washed clean by his blood. And that's what's the awesome thing about that as we sit here. He makes us to lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside quiet waters. He restores our soul. Jesus was Kayla's good shepherd because she, he did that for her. She knew him, and so her soul was restored knowing that she was forgiven. She knew she didn't have to be perfect. That's not, I don't know any Christian that walks around going, yeah, I'm perfect. That's, that's not what we do. We know that we are sheep and that Jesus is our shepherd who takes care of us. And that's far better than trying to be sheep of the month or, you know, the best sheep you can be here. It doesn't matter. We live for our God, and that's part of our life, and yet, our security is in with our God, not in ourself. And I, th I know that was Kayla's life too. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. There's a lot there I just want to focus on. He guides me in paths of righteousness. Um, Kayla's life seemed to be one of service. That seemed to be what she enjoyed doing. Um, and again, I apologize, I don't know her better, but I take comfort in the fact every day when I wake up, and I tell my kids this too, that God prepares good works in advance for you to do. So even if you think you don't have a lot going on today, God's got stuff planned for you. So go to the grocery store, go live your life, and then the people that you meet and talk to, I shared with you how I've been able to talk to so many people that have nothing to do with Star Bethlehem Lutheran Church. And... Um, it's been awesome, just living in North Carolina. And so with boldness, go out and live just as Kayla did, and everyone that you touch will know the Good Shepherd because they knew you. And that's, I believe, how Kayla lived her life, everybody that she touched as well. Verses 4 and 5, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. You've heard the expression, no fear. How could Kayla go through life with no fear? I don't know that Kayla had any enemies. None of you said that she was, you know, stalked by anyone or had mortal enemies. But all of us have one enemy, and that would be death. And um, it's a little crazy to have a YOLO license plate, you know. That, that, that's tacky. And yet, if you're a Christian, I've done a whole sermon series on no fear. Because what are you afraid of? With your good shepherd by your side, he protects you from all harm. And finally, the only enemy she really had was death. And I'm convinced that even in her sleep, 
Kayla stared down death and was not afraid because she wasn't alone. Her good shepherd was by her side and saw her through that and brought her safely home. Verse 6, Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I know that Kayla is in heaven just from what you told me about her confession as a Christian. Because that has been God's promise. And so when I minister to people, I don't necessarily care what the performance was of that person. I care what my God promises. And um, I've asked them, do you realize that what if I don't believe any of this? What if it's just a, a sham and yet the promises of my God stand forever? There have been controversies over the history of the church and the world where you've seen clergy do terrible things and the church gets drawn through the mud and I say, I don't really care. It's not about me. You guys don't know me. It's about my God. And that's why all of you are here. You guys have met me for one hour. You're here because of your good shepherd too. And so I started this by saying, Jesus is Kayla's good shepherd and he is yours too. And so I have to ask, how are you doing? The same good shepherd who was with Kayla until the very day that she got to meet him face to face is still with you. Even though this is a very sudden and difficult loss for anybody to face, you're not alone. Your good shepherd is with you during this time and has not abandoned you. I know this is going to be difficult, and I encouraged you on Friday. I'm going to say it again. Give, your time, give yourselves time to grieve. That's difficult. We don't like to do it. We like to say, I want to be strong for this or that. Uh-uh. Lower the bar. Be weak. Cry. Miss, because there's a giant Kayla-shaped hole in your life that cannot be replaced. The reason why you grieve is because there's a new normal that has to take over that grows comfortable with that hole. Don't replace it. Why would you want to? Kayla's an amazing woman from everything that I've heard. Remember her and know that you'll see her again because she's in glory. She's with her good shepherd. He's not abandoned you. He's by your side at this time, my fellow sheep. Amen. we confess our Christian faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Um, there's one more hymn in here. We don't have to sing it if you guys would rather not. You guys don't seem like the singing type, and that's okay. So I'm, I'm going to skip I'm But a Stranger here if that's okay. We're going to jump straight to the prayer, all right? Almighty God, we praise you for the great company of saints who have finished their lives in faith and now rest from their labors. Remember especially our loved one, Kayla, whom you have redeemed by the blood of your son and received as your dear child through holy baptism. In your compassion, comfort all who are sad in this hour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you for the love in Christ which sustains us in life and death. In our earthly sorrows, help us find strength in the fellowship of the church, joy in the forgiveness of sins, and hope in the resurrection of eternal life. Lord, to your mercy, hear our prayer. You do not leave us comfortless, but strength and care for us through word and sacrament. You give us family, friends, and neighbors to help when there is loneliness now and in the days to come. Brighten our future with a firm trust in your promises and care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remove our fears and make us bold to pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. It is not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I, I don't mind singing Abide With Me, but if you guys would rather not. I'm going to sing the, the, the last verse, if that's okay. Because it's beautiful. Hold thou thy cross before my closing eye. Shine through the gloom and point me to the sky. Heaven's morning breaks and earth's vain shadows flee. In life, in death, O Lord, abide with me. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Um, if you guys want to say something, you may. I don't have anything more to add. I would, I would love to talk to any of you who wanted to talk to me going forward, especially if you don't have a church home. If you do, keep going. Um, but I'll leave that up to you guys. And you guys are welcome to stay here as long as you want to. You're very welcome. It's an honor to serve your family. Absolutely. You're very welcome.